the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. You are never alone. In the early part of John 14, the disciples of Jesus were troubled when he told them he was going to leave them to prepare a place for them in heaven. The disciples were upset. Jesus was leaving them, the one they had come to know as a son of God, the one they worshipped, the one who took care of them, the one that looked to for guidance was leaving them. The one their whole life revolved around was leaving them. Oh, how must have felt when the Son of God told them he must go. You need to realize that Jesus was talking to a group of men who had followed him day and night for three years. They had seen his miracles. They had been protected by Jesus. They had been taught by him. Jesus had provided for them for three years. Any problems they had, they went to Jesus and he solved it for them. Their whole life literally revolved around Jesus. They had left their jobs, their, their lives, and even family members behind also. And now he was leaving them. One of the most wonderful things about God is he never takes away. He only adds more. He never subtracts, but he adds. He never leaves you in distress, but he always comforts you. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He left, so the Father will send the, the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus highlighted to us that it is the best interest that he leaves. John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. This had to be difficult for the disciples to believe. How on earth is it in their interest of the disciples that Jesus left? It is expedient for you that I go away. From our perspective, these words that Jesus of Jesus hardly seem like a good thing. Jesus not being here with people does not seem advantageous for me because I need Jesus in my life. I need the Savior in my life. I need the one that raises the dead and walks on water in my life. It was understandable that it was the disciples were confused as to how it could be to their advantage that Jesus was going away. This is not by any means a negative thing as long as Jesus was there in person. The object of the disciples' faith was always be a tangible external person, Jesus Christ. This is great still, but Jesus knew the disciples would have to go out into the world and preach the gospel, as he would not be physically present with them and all at the same time. But the Holy Spirit would, even in the lives of believers today, although Christ is not physically there with them, the Holy Spirit is. All across the world, the furthest reaches of the globe, there are people, saints of God, who are indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. All across the continent of Africa, you will find people like this. All across the continent of Europe, we will find people like this. 
All across North and South America, you will find people like this, people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, people in all walks in life who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps the reason why these words of Jesus do not encourage us is because we do not draw upon the power, life, and strength of the Holy Spirit. We cry out to Jesus saying, Where are you? Yet fail to sense the presence and comfort of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus says, This is to our advantage, then he is right, and our perspective must be wrong. If Jesus didn't leave, the Holy Spirit would not come. When Jesus was physically on earth, he was not omnipresent, but the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He also knows all things and lives in all believers at the same time. Like the disciples of Jesus, many of us, are getting weighed down because we think we are alone. We think God has left us. The message of today says the Holy Spirit is your comforter and that you are never alone. There is something great about the consciousness of the Holy Spirit will do to you. Understanding that he is ever right beside you in every situation gives you great peace, which no word can express. Jesus promised to send another comforter when he leaves the world. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. Fortunately, we are not expecting the fulfillment of that promise like the disciples of Christ. We already have the reality of that promise. The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, and ever since then, he has been in the world. Jesus told us in clear terms what the Holy Spirit will come to do when he finally comes. The word comforter in John chapter fourteen, sixteen refers to the Holy Spirit. The Amplified Version gives us the whole scope of the Comforter's ministry. As the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is also Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby. We cannot have all these things in the Holy Spirit and live as if we are alone. Have you ever wondered at the reason that every believer was tortured and imprisoned and yet they remained happy? It was because the Holy Spirit was their comforter. They wouldn't be in need for the comforter of the Holy Spirit if there were no distrust in the world. Jesus never told us there would be no difficult times in our lives but he assures us of comfort through the Holy Spirit. No matter what you are passing through, the Holy Spirit is with you. He is strengthening you, fortifying you. Come and strength in your life. The greatest cause of tragedy of believers does not lie. First of all, the fact that all are faced with challenges, but in the fact that we are almost unconscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us in our worst times. Whatever storms you are going through right now, whether it is sickness, whether it is the depth of the death of a loved one, whether it is financial difficulty, whether it is divorce, whether it is the fear of the future, I want you to remember Isaiah 43, verse 2. Whether thou passeth through the waters, I will be thee. And through the rivers, we shall not overflow. they shall not overflow thee. When you walketh through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. 
neither shall the flame kindle unto thee unto thee. God never told us that we would not face challenges. However, he sh we should be conscious of the fact that when the Holy Spirit is with us, we will not face the challenges alone. You are never alone. Live in the reality. You are never alone. Don't forget that in reality, you are never alone. When you cry yourself to sleep, God is there with you. He is God that loves you and cares for you in a way in which you will never be able to understand. The Comforter, which the Holy Spirit supplies to believers, overwhelms the turbulence in the world. There is nothing more comforting than to know the Holy Spirit is with you at all times, both in good times and bad. The reason the challenges of life will never be able to, to overcome us is that the Holy Spirit is with us. But you and I need to make an active effort an active endeavor to build a relationship with him. You can build a relationship with him, my friend. You can. If you see him for who he really is, the Holy Spirit is not an it, but he is a person, you see. Jesus never re referred to him as an it. He always said he or him. The Holy Spirit is a person. If you think of the Holy Spirit only as an essence, a power or wind, you would not be able to develop a relationship with a wind, but you can develop a relationship with the person. One who will be with you in all situations. You see, having the Holy Spirit is like having Jesus with you. In John chapter 14, verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. You see that word, another, in the original language means another of the same kind. How Jesus was there for the disciples is how the Holy Spirit is there for you. What storm are you facing today? You are not alone. Never alone. Amen.